Okay. So let's do the recap of the today's game. Pretty crazy game. Yeah, I gotta change the title of the stream, that's for sure. Alright, let's do it. Let's go on to the creator dashboard. The stream info. So it's gonna be Dink versus Nepo. No, Dink win versus Nepo game 12. Recap. All right. Okay. So, um, call the system pretty much takes Nepo out of the book. I kind of like the notes on the news today. I was reading Chess.com report on this game, and they said that during the press conference, somebody asked Nepo if he was surprised by this call opening, and supposedly he made a face and said no. <laughs> okay, but all right, let's see. Knight of six, knight of three, d5. So instead of London, you we have a delayed London system. I really don't understand why Nepo would go and take d4 and allow this bishop to get into the game and translate into the London system. I guess he studied so much London system that he decided to go for it anyway. And uh, queen c7. Interesting move. Um, the idea of this move is rooted in uh, the Karakhan defense where white plays bishop d3 and black often plays queen c7 to stop bishop f4, okay? And then white often have to play knight e2 to develop this bishop to f4. Right, so queen c7 makes sense. Also, if you play knight c6 immediately, you sort of run into the possibility that white can play bishop gb5. And there is like huge theory where white can go knight e5 and fight for this Square and a5, okay? So it's a kind of positional game, very technical, that Nepo doesn't really like. So he plays queen c7, makes a useful move. Potentially you protect the knight. You, you stop this bishop f4. And you keep an option of playing bishop g4. And queen c7 in general, they call it by structure. After bishop d6, bishop g4 is a pretty normal move. The only strange thing is that he played this so early, but because knight on d2 is not really that great, so I can understand that. So what happened? White plays c3, also a useful move. He doesn't want to declare this bishop position. He wants to keep the center row closed, but that means no c4, which is important moment. And right now, uh, I don't understand this bishop d7. To me, this is a clear loss of a tempo. Why would you not play knight c6, yeah? The only reason for me is you're scared of this bishop b5 but 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 why would you be scared of this bishop b5 yeah i mean you can play bishop d7 now pretty much so you're thinking maybe castles a6 because if you take on c6 it's pretty much nothing um pair of bishops Without this light squared bishop, white has nothing. Um, there are some positions where you can take on c6, but usually that's where you already <clears throat> trade these bishops, and then it's not so clear. So, bishop d3 and bishop g4. But okay, I see the point. Yeah, black still plays bishop d7, still plays bishop g4. So the question is then, can you play a6 here? And why you cannot take with a queen, yeah? So this is pretty much a critical position, but I do not believe that it's so dangerous for white here. Because again, uh, you get this knight here, but you don't have light squared bishop. So the only continuation is if you play knight f3 and try to play bishop f4 very fast, try to hit this queen. But again, bishop g4 is the engine move. Bishop f4, queen b6, and uh, black wants to play e6 and just complete the developments. Yeah, you can have this probably. If 
castles. Yeah, queen a4 is always queen b5. This pawn structure is okay from black, okay? Is okay. Because you cannot get to this pawn, especially after e6. There is no way. So black is okay there. Um, so it makes sense to castle e6. And if knight e5 is just mass trades, it's like nothing. So h3, knight f6, and knight ah, b3. Okay. Hmm. This is very interesting. Because if bishop e7, c4, take, take, castles. This is hanging pawns, but this is actually pretty good hanging pawns for white. Uh, because this pawn is weak. Usually you have a7, b6. But in this particular case, this pawn is here. Which makes this pawn pretty weak. Together with this bishop controlling this diagonal. So white can consider just going crazy on this pawn. Um, a lot of red and orange. Alright, so I don't look at it that way. Um, Alright, so this was very interesting. Um, I also don't think why bishop g4 is so bad immediately. Probably he didn't like this g4 and 95, yeah. This does look very scary, so I agree. And you don't want to take on f3 and leave your opponent with a pair of bishops, for sure. But what about bishop f5 here, yeah? What about this move? The computer really goes for knight h4, which is very unusual. Very unusual. Hmm. So bishop g6, you just grab this bishop, play g3, and again, it's a little bit better for white always. I agree. And if you play bishop g4... Okay, this knight goes here. Bishop d3, and apparently this knight on h4 is actually not that bad, yeah. Because he's waiting for this bishop to get closed. So you can bank this bishop with your knight. And you get a pair of bishops. It is kind of weird, you know why? Because first of all, black is not going to play bishop g6 unless you play g4. But if you play g4, then after this trade, this is a different structure. Ideally, you want pawns like this, not like this. Because with the pawns like this, um, pawn is hanging, okay, so g5, knight d7, you can even play knight h5, and you get this very, very nice square, so black is better, okay? So this is a very interesting position. You cannot play g4 with white because after the trade you want this pawn on g3, okay? So very interesting position. I think that white is, uh, black is okay here, okay? So the computer actually suggests king f1. Now g4. The idea is to hide the king here on g2. Protect the rook, protect the pawns. And now a lot of people played against me in the simuls and the, the blitz games. They played castle. I couldn't understand why they played, but now I understand because the computer says so. Um, also makes sense, right? You don't want to castle right into the attack. Here the king is pretty safe because it's very hard to make an attack here without this whole pawn, move, uh, pawn chain moving. But if you play c4, then this king is kind of going to get open too. Right. Okay, so this is a very, very complicated position. I don't know who is better. I suspect black can play knight e4, f5. Very complicated. But okay, we're going to look at the game. Um, less of this. So bishop d7 stops, bishop b5 doesn't stop knight e5. Knight e5 makes a lot of sense. But Dingo plays bishop d3. He figures black is going to have to move this bishop anyway. So he wants to win a tempo. Completely understandable. Bishop g4. Black wants to get into the standard call spot. Pawn tempo down, but okay. So rook e1, e6, knight f1. Bishop d6. So what we have is the Carlsbad reversed. This is queen, um, queen's gambit declined. This is pretty, pretty much 
identical position, okay? This is pretty much identical position, except that black is down some 10 pieces. So bishop g5, um, originally the idea was to trade these bishops if white wants to equalize, but uh, Dean has more ambitious plans. Castles, and the question, you, the reason why it castles is because we play knight d7, there is a problem with knight d3. Okay, you attack the bishop and you attack the pawn because black king being down a tempo compared to the regular cause but reverse colors uh, you don't have time okay but if you play like this uh, the pawn is hanging so you don't have time to take this pawn because if you take this pawn the threat is g3 which means you have to move your bishop but then you lose a very very important central pawn okay so king f8 is better and then you can just play pretty much anything here uh, po -po -po -po. Um, I kind of like this move to let my bishop have a getaway square. Queen h5 is also very reasonable. g3, h6, queen h5. Uh, I don't know. What is the problem with king g8? Bishop h4, really? Alright, this is engine play, yeah. Engine play. Um, and the reason this move is okay, I guess, is because you have knight g4, yeah? This is the only move, otherwise black is just better. Oh, you have... Oh, it's not over. You have to play bishop g6 here. Okay. So, you know, the computer always finds the crazy tactics, even the, in, in the simple position, okay? But finally, the truth prevails, and after knight d8, the computer realized this cavalry attack without being supported by the rooks or by the pawns is going nowhere yeah and black is better okay finally the truth all right so that's why don't trust the engine analysis like right away and wait for it okay but this is the reason why Nepo cannot play knight d7 because the overall strategic nature of that position is better for black he plays castles and now he is waiting for bishop h4 g3, and then it's a very positional game, black is fine. So Ding has to win, so he plays bishop f6. Perfectly understandable. But now this is very, very double-edged. Very double-edged. I think overall these kind of positions are better for black, especially in this scenario when king is castled. You have a5, bishop f3, king h8, rook g8. I think white is... Um, in a very dangerous situation here. So let's see what happens. Knight g3. Okay, makes sense. You're cutting away the squares of retreat for black bishop. You're preparing h3. Um, f5 is okay. I was more expecting like king h8 though. Why? Because you need, you need really every tempo to get this rook asap here. Okay? So king h8, if white plays queen d2, um, yeah, bishop f4, very important move. Cut off uh, white king from access to the h6 square. So after king h8, white is just much worse. I don't understand why Napo played f5 so early. It seems like he was very, very nervous in this game, yeah? Very, very nervous. Because after king h8, black is just better. Because queen cannot get here. The rook is coming to g8. And then you get a 5, a 4, and black is just completely winning. If you play h3, there's this nice move. You've got to play something like um, king f1. Yeah, then definitely e5. So you can't play that. So you need to play this. All right. Um, the only moves, rook g3, rook d1. Alright, so Nepo was not sure of this, he's gonna make a draw in this position. Okay, understandable. But do you have to really sacrifice this bishop? Because that's computer line, yeah? That is a computer line. So, uh, just to make sure we understand each other, uh, bishop g3, hg4 is uh, pretty good for white, because this strong pawn, and then you get the rook to h1. Black doesn't have a five. This bishop is stronger than this counterpart. 
so you don't play this. So the only way to play is to take here and play a five. Uh, but you gotta calculate knight f five. Okay. All right. So maybe we get the transposition then after h three, right? Maybe a transposition. I'm just concerned here that um, no, it's just draw. Yeah. No, it's not draw, but it's um, it's this uh, same thing, the same thing. So king h8 is a transposition. Okay, f5, h3, take, take. So pretty sure um, Nepo thought about bishop g3 here. But after h3, when I do g4, this is going to be really weak. So he cannot play that. He plays knight e7. Um, again, ideally, you want the queen here. But knight e7 looks reasonable. Protect the pawn on f5, knight transfers to g6, where he can go to h4 or f4, and black is ready for king h8. So, good move. Knight h5, king h8, and now we have g4, which is pretty much mandatory, I think. I think Ding has to play this. Because if you don't play this, black is gonna just overrun white's position with knight g6, knight h4. I mean, you can play g3, but it's going to be extremely passive. If you play g3, the knight on h5 has no moves. And white has no play. So you got to play g4, especially if you're playing for a win. This is the only way to play. Rook g8, king h1, okay. And now knight g6. Yeah, this is important move. This is the only move, yeah. This is the only move. So we have to look why gf5 is bad. So knight h4 is an obvious move. Queen has to go to e3, because if you go to e2, this looks pretty bad news. Yeah, check and mate. So you go queen e3, trying to go to h6, create some threats. Um, and black can just take here. Because of queen h6, rook g6, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, there is no threat, yeah? Because you cannot get to this knight. We have symmetrical knights, symmetrical bishops. But this bishop is closed, and this bishop is not closed. That's why the computer plays f4 here, tries to close this bishop as well. And after knight g2, white loses the exchange. So, you know, because black rook is on g-file first. So you don't take this pawn. That's the lesson. Uh, bishop, bishop c2 is kind of weird. Um, it is weird, I agree. So rook g1 was pretty natural. Then we'll see knight h4. We're probably gonna see queen e2. And because the threat is still you wanna take on f5 and double black pawns. And then maybe mass trades, maybe knight f6, knight d5. So black has to play f4. And we have this position, which is pretty weird. Uh, pretty weird. I mean, this knight is not protected, but together with this pawn, it seems like white king is more in, in more danger, even though this knight is protected, and this bishop is open, but um, this presence of this pawn really makes me think that, you know, sometimes ideas like f3 and some infiltration on g2 square eventually is possible. I, I agree that this is very likely to be an equal position, but there is so much play here. White has no choice but to play c4 at some point if he has, if he wants to make progress, because the black plays rook g8 and holds everything here. There is just no movement. This is solid, rock solid. So white has to play c4 at some point, b3, and then try to get the queen here. But if you play c4, it's likewise, you open your own king. Okay, so yeah, but this is what was expected, yeah? I don't understand why he plays bishop c2. Actually, I do understand. Black plays knight h4, he wants to play queen d3 and prevent the spawn move from at all, okay? So what happened? Knight h4, he plays queen e3. Uh, if queen d3, there is no threats. Again, because of rook g2. So bishop on c2 is kind of weird. Um, 
Again, because bishop should be here preparing c4. Yeah. The only reason for this bishop is to have this queen here, but uh, I really don't like it. Rook g5, rook g8, potentially even exchange sack here. Maybe even knight g6, knight f4. Yeah. I, I don't see any play really. No play uh, for white. So it looks like, you know, black is doing really well. So let's see, queen e3, um, queen h6 idea, rook g6, first line move. Again, if you oh, if you take on a 5 it's rook g2, pretty much, especially with the bishop here. So white has to stand, he stands with rook g1, f4, this part of the game Napoli plays really well, queen d3. So Ding was afraid of fg4, right? He was he was trying to provoke f4. I'm not sure why he was afraid of fg4 because to me it looks as a, a uh, like a plus for white because white queens gets the square where you can hit this knight and open the h file. So I, I I don't know why black would want to take on g4. So f4 is very reasonable. You're sort of trying to threaten g5. Rook g4 hit this guy. So queen e7. So if you play g5 now, you have a really only move. Wow. Because you cannot take this, okay? And rook g4 is a major threat. I thought maybe knight f5 is the thing, but after queen f3 it's not really the thing. But the reason for that is after this, rook g1 forced move. Um, yeah, if you play queen h6, bishop f5, it's pretty obvious, right? You have triple pawns, it just doesn't work. White is at least at least small advantage. But if you try to go into tactics and then queen h6, and we got very, very nice line with rook g7. And instead of taking this pawn and running into rook g8, rook g1 mate, you gotta play bishop d1, yeah. And then you have crazy position where you can just take this and white is better, all right? So this shows how complicated this position is. So white plays g5, there's only one move, h6, which is absolutely crazy, yeah? You open your king, but remember what, what I mentioned earlier, if, white, if black takes on g4 and you open the h file, this is the same thing. If you take on h6, rook now protects everything. Now the knight on h5 is absolutely unprotected. King is weak, and this king is very, very safe. And you just want to take on g5, basically, here. So black is pretty much winning. So g5 doesn't work. So Ding plays rook e1, okay, and allows queen g5. So no more g5, rook g4 ideas. Queen here stands really well, protects the pawn, takes away all the squares from this knight. Uh, potentially, potentially, but potentially, you know, there is not much going on. Yeah, not much going on. I'm thinking black probably wants to play queen h6, so the queen can protect the pawn and this rook finally can leave and do other things in this game. Because the queen on h6 will still be taking lower squares under control, but he would let this rook be here. Although I'm not sure why is it so good, yeah? I mean, so this look, rook looks pretty good. On the other hand, what white can do? Black is okay with the draw, and he has a better position. So let's see, c4, no choice, yeah? You gotta play c4, I guess. So, if queen c4, then we get knight f3. This is pretty bad for white because you cannot take this rook, your knight falls, and black just wins the exchange. So, I don't know, maybe c4 was just a blunder, but if you play b3 and prepare c4, I mean, that to me that looks pretty normal. Okay, so the computer suggests rook g8, c4, and f5, which is a Nepo move. And the idea is if you take on f, you cannot take on f5 right now because of this 
rook hanging. But the threat is, I guess, to take on g4. So you cannot take this pawn, c5, bishop c7, let's move these pawns. And what is the problem? Okay, knight f3. There's always tactical solution, yeah. You cleaned the h file and then you grab and grab on g1. Nice. So that is the threat. Okay. That's why white has to play f3. Uh, and it looks okay, but the engine, of course, always finds something. Yeah. So same idea of hg4, knight f3. So you gotta play this. But the engine now finds knight f5. Because if you take, 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 f3, and goodbye. Okay. But if you don't take this knight, then this knight gets to e3. This knight gets away from this terrible square to a very nice square, while white knight remains here. And also, queen goes to h4. So this is not the position you want to get. Okay. So if you play passively, you get pretty much uh, destroyed. So Ding, probably understanding all this, he plays this. He decides to muddy the waters and plays queen c3. Objectively, his position is probably lost. He has zero compensation. b5 is a very nice move. a4. And I'm pretty very surprised now. Um, I'm very surprised with b4 because I don't see... What is the problem with a6, really? I don't understand. What is the problem with this move? Why can't you just support the spawn chain? Are you really afraid of d5? Nope. Nothing. Rook a1, maybe. But then you have to worry about queen d5 check because you don't have bishop e4 anymore. So I don't really understand uh, Nepo. He had completely winning position. Plays b4. Give this very important pawn. And then uh, he doesn't play knight f3, right? So he probably was trying to play knight f3 and then he sees queen c6, hitting everything. Rook, knight, bishop. But then he doesn't calculate that knight e1, hitting the bishop. If you hit this, I mean, you have to, right? Because if you take only one, rook d8, it's just exchange down. So you gotta take this. So it's a simple calculation, right? Rook g8, queen c6 is actually terrible because of queen h4, no defense. And if queen e4, take, take, queen d5, check. Uh, you cannot play f3. King h2 is the only move. f3, opening the bishop, and then you take the pawn on d4. And, then, and you can never lose this, yeah? I would even play queen e5 here. Just to be, to be absolutely sure that I don't lose this. Um, yeah. So he, he, he saw queen c6 and he plays now rook g8. Queen c6. And the winning move is knight f5. Which is the computer engine move. Because you need the space on h4 for your knight. Hi, Mr. Turn Mao. He was gonna go a b5, a b5, d5, e5, and rook e1, rook a1. Um, all right, let's take a look at that. So a6, take, take, d5, e5, and rook a1. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So the question now, rook d8, rook e8, or rook g8, okay? Uh, rook d8 is very, very normal move. Because you protect the bishop, everything is protected. I'm not sure what Ding wants to play, maybe bishop e4, try to close this diagonal, but then big problems at the bishop c5. Uh, very, very big problems, rook f1. Okay, I have the engine, right? But what about if I don't have the engine? Um, 
What about if I don't have the engine? If I don't have the engine, I most likely want to play rook h6 with the threat of f5. Rook h6, because if f5 runs into now rook d6, queen e5. Um, but it still, it still is a 5, yeah? Because you cannot take it. Hmm. And you cannot move the bishop. Because after knight f3, it's game over. So maybe not bishop e4, yeah? If not bishop e4, can it be queen a5? Not really, because queen needs to control the square. Because if you don't control the square, queen h4. Yeah, I think Nepo was missing knight f3 in a lot of lines. For some reason, for him, this move was not really visible. Yeah, I don't understand this. But queen f3 and queen h4 is just a, just a win. All right. Okay, whatever line he was thinking. Okay, he was trying to find the most uh, line that he doesn't lose immediately. Yeah, rook g8 is still pretty weird. Queen c6. And bishop b8. So Napo was really going after this king. You know, you know he's a kind of dynamic attacking player. So when 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 he when he sees this king, you have all, the entire force looking at this guy, right? He's just gone mad. Yeah, he's like a bull that sees this red herring. Yeah, the king on h1 is a red herring. So I I think Napo just forgot that you know he doesn't have to win this game. But he thought he is winning. Objectively, he is correct. He is winning. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah, knight of five is very, very hard to see. Very hard to see. Beautiful move. Absolutely beautiful. Again, same idea. Queen h4. Yeah. Now we also get knight d4 and everything else. Um, beautiful move. Yeah, g5 runs into this, this, and um, f3 and. Um, Rook g2, yeah. And just rook takes, made threats, yeah. Yeah, okay. Knight f5, very hard to see. Bishop b8 is very human. Very human move. Getting bishop away. Uh, but there is no threats now, yeah. No threats. Um, and now they were both down to 30 minutes, 28 minutes. Ding has to mix things up. I'm very curious why the computer thinks that bishop g6 is so good. I don't understand. So if I take with the pawn, you play d5. Okay, I understand. You wanna you wanna get this guy. Hmm. So if I take on h5, you take on a6. That's the whole point. Alright, that actually makes a lot of sense. That actually does make a lot of sense. Because only you have only one rook, yeah? Take on g4, there is no threat at all. I can just go ef7, rook g4, completely winning. And the point behind d5 is if you take here, there's knight f6. And again, with this file closed, this rook hanging, knight is out, you have rook e8, black is lost. Okay, so then black has to take with the knight and try to think about transferring this knight to d5, which is the only solution. But again, the computer is just laughs, yeah. Basically, you should play f3 just in case to lock this bishop. There is no mate. Queen h4, king h2. You can play computer rook e2, but king h2 I think is very human. Okay, but then you run into the uh, repetition. Yeah, so you have to find rook e2 here. But okay, it's not a hard move to find. Uh, queen b7, knight e5, and king h2. And that's it, no attack for black. Knight, knight protects squares. Pawns are hanging, bishop is locked. So so in a way, you know, this, this you know, it's really weird, yeah? You went from minus two to plus two in one move. It's not really obvious, not really obvious at all. Very human move. Queen b7, another human move. And 
rook h6 also very human black wants to play f5 Napa wanted to play f5 his whole game but he misplayed it again he has to play knight f5 but he doesn't uh, understand um, I think he had big problems calculating it yeah it's very strange that Napo has problems calculating because again if you're in a dynamic attacking player calculation is your biggest uh, advantage you have to calculate accurately yeah knight of five is if you can play knight of five and get your knight out of the square so you can get the queen to h4 attack hit everything yeah it's crazy you should be able to you you might you should be able to find this move because if you trade on f5 yeah this is a good trade okay fg4 is coming was he afraid of queen f7 is that it but then queen h4 made in mate mate's coming right no king h2 because of f3 check yeah very strange they have 36 minutes and he plays rook h6 he's probably counting on queen f7 and then you just go and grab this um, which makes a lot of sense so Ding plays bishop e4 protects the square from the knight and rook f8 yeah rook f8 human move but a mistake so Napa lost track of the game let's 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 be honest about it yeah Napa lost track of the game here he does not see way to the white king he didn't see knight f5 idea he stumbles upon rook h6 with idea rook h5 but doesn't work and now he had to find f3 to open this bishop and to enter with the queen yeah because now the bishop is open now you can create threats like queen d6 very hard but you gotta do it he was afraid of knight. he was afraid of queen f7 obviously and then the only move is knight g2 attacking this rook if this rook moves anywhere knight f4 and you finally get rid of this knight and black wins yeah um so queen f3 knight one this rook is terrible but again the activity of this queen together with this bishop allows for pretty interesting compensation very hard game guys very very hard games what happened to nepo he he was uh, he was provoked yeah. he was provoked into this massively looking attack which was actually decisive but he got lost in the tactics he couldn't find the win and if you cannot find the win the tactics um, you start blundering stuff like in this game he plays rook f8 ding takes the pawn it's a free pawn you attack the rook Queen d8. Now he is looking for a draw, but there is no draw now because white counterattacks. Yeah, and white has extra pawn now. Bishop is very strong. Knight g6, good defense. Bishop g2. Yeah, Ding plays very very well this part of the game. You see, big problems because now this rook is really, really a problem. You know, the rook on g6 was much better. So he tries to play queen h4 finally, aggressive, rook e2, bishop protects everything, protects the king, takes care of this diagonal, while this queen is always harassing black. Nepo really wants to put this knight on d5, but he can't. And that, that's how this move was born, okay? Probably he wanted to play king g8 first, but after d5 again, um, this looks pretty bad. But it's still okay, I think, yeah. Rook d1, then you play f5. And again, it becomes super complicated. So uh, even here, it is extremely complicated. Yeah, I I'm trying to understand why the computer just gives this pawn. And my understanding is that he wants to prevent f5 at all costs because then you get check or something. Rook d1 makes a lot of sense. 
And what happens if you just move bishop back? Then white counterattacks and makes this whole formation look extremely silly. Okay. Yeah, so very, very nice play by Dink. Uh, he utilizes... Um, you, you guys have to understand that Dink was one of the best calculators. And this game shows why, yeah. He was one of the best calculators in the world. I remember I spoke about it like a couple of years ago. And along with Fabiano Corana, by the way, okay? I'm not talking about Magnus. Magnus is like, he's a, he's a god. He does everything. Uh, but um, among the other players, Fabiano and Dink are the best calculators in chess. Okay. If we had the reverse situation and Ding was playing black, I have zero doubts Ding would find this knight f5, he would find knight f3. Remember those two moves that we're winning for black? I have zero doubt that he would find all that. Nepo, he is unpredictable. Um, all right, so in the game f5 and after rook e6 is game over, yeah? Because if you take on g4, d5, Bishop b5, and it's rook takes, and it's with the check. Everything is with the check. So it's not like he blundered. He, he blundered in the worst possible moment. Okay? He blundered in the worst possible moment, and there was just no nothing. No play at all. It's pretty bloody amazing. And d6, and finally this bishop got closed, and white bishop is open. So, um... Lesson from this is what? You know, uh, play rook d8, keep this bishop where he is. He is pretty good at protecting everything, at blocking this pawn, keep the rook on g6. Uh, blocking this diagonal, rook on h6 is bad. Rook on h6 is good, protecting the king. And look for ways to utilize this rook, because in a lot of lines you need this rook here. Look for ways to improve your knight, okay? Because you need this rook to play queen h4. So he plays rook g8, looks good, but bishop b8 allows the win. And now again, he missed the only chance here, knight f5 was a big advantage. Again, queen h4 idea, yeah. And uh, he plays rook h6 after this, it's, 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 he had to find f3, which is impossible. Um, now I think he just panicked because white protected everything, no threats. Probably he wanted to play queen d6, but then again check, e5, uh, no threats, zero threats, bishop e4, this, everything is blocked, this is blocked, b4, queen c5, queen c6, potentially rook c1, c6, it's just a terrible position. I mean, maybe you're thinking about f5, but now there is, again, the queen is gone, this is everything protected, it just lost. All right, so this was pretty, pretty complicated, very strange game, uh, very wild. Vashel Graf is the best calculator, okay. Uh, yeah, he is definitely, um, he is definitely not bad, yeah. Especially lately, yeah. I mean, um, a lot of guys are really good calculators, but I'm talking about the absolute best in my opinion, and absolute best is Ding and Fabi. Okay, I'm not. I'm not uh, saying Le Graf is, uh, you know. Yeah, I'm saying he is not the absolute best in my opinion. He is pretty damn good. Okay, which is more than enough for everybody else. Yeah, but I, I, I just don't think he is the best. All right. Um. All right. Um. Well, because first of all, I played almost everybody, okay? Yeah, I understand I, you guys think I'm old, I'm only good enough to report people and blah, blah, blah. But you guys forget probably that in, um, you know, I had a very long chess career and I actually played a lot of people in my life. I understand for people, uh, I must be a dinosaur since I played Tal, I played uh, Korchnoi, I played Smyslov, I must be like, just as old as these guys, but not exactly. But I did manage to play people from Smyslov and Kaspar all the way to, 
you know, guys like Harry Gacy, Giri, and uh, Vashiel Graf, and uh, all the current youngsters, okay? I don't know, it's kind of ridiculous, but it seems kind of amazing. But yeah, I played everybody. I played all these guys in classical chess. And, you know, when you play these guys, you form a certain um, evaluation in your minds, you know, like who is the best and uh, what are his strengths and what are his weaknesses, okay? All right. In my mind, uh, Vasily Graf was one of the best preparers in the world. His preparation was like always very, very sharp, very, uh, you know, on point, and he was one of the best preparers. Um, but he, again, uh, he, he, is, he is a great player, of course, and what is uh, so great about him in my mind in modern chess is that he's adapting. So he is uh, learning, he's working on his weaknesses, he is uh, trying to improve that, and um, he's trying to adapt his chess to, you know, um, again. All right. Um, the best Chinese players now and 20, 30 years ago. Okay. Uh, Guys, I need a break, okay? I just played uh, Arena Kings. There was some crazy games there. Uh, I just did a recap, okay? Very complicated game. Very hard to, uh, to properly actually analyze it. To properly analyze this game, you need like at least a day, okay? But uh, for the recap, I think we covered the important moments. Um, I think I covered uh, what I thought was uh, Nepo's inability to calculate. And that actually uh, is a big, big uh, problem. Because um, if you cannot score, if you cannot even make a draw in a position like this, then it's, it's pretty bloody scary, okay? So Dean can think that he can take now a lot of risk. But then again, Napo can actually calculate really well. But in this game, he went completely berserk. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, we have seen in the first five games, I think, of the match, uh, Nepo demonstrated that he could calculate like, you know, like a champ. But in this game, something happened to him. And to me, what happened in this game is very similar to what happened in his games against um, uh, Magnus. Okay. Some moves, he just goes completely crazy. I don't know why that happens. It just happens. Okay, it's just Nepo thing. Like some moves, like a lot of people agree, it's like nobody in the world will play, and but he plays, he finds them. Um, okay, all right, guys. So this was a recap. In about, uh, give me a bigger break today, okay? Uh, in about forty-five minutes. No, about okay. Now it's five to nine. So let's start the simul at about nine forty-five, okay? So 9.45, we're going to have the Simon. So thank you for staying. Thank you for staying for the Arena Kings. Thank you for support. Thank you for staying for the recap. And I'll see you guys at the Simon. So have a good night. So I'll see you in uh, 50 minutes. All right. Good night, everybody. Simon. No, it's, it's, it's going to be a Simon. Because I don't... Uh, because this weekend I'm playing Bundesliga. And I will not be able to do the Simon. So this Simon today is sort of replacement for the weekend Simon. Alright guys, I'll see you uh, in 15 minutes.